Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Raquel B. I make tech lifestyle and personal development videos here on YouTube. In today's video, I am bringing you a part two of the beginner's tips and tricks to MacBook. I said that word beginners macbooks tips and tricks whatever i made a part one i'll link it either up here and down in the description bar but in that video essentially what i did was i walked you through all the cool things i'd learned like having my macbook for about three weeks all the things that i figured you guys would need to know if you have a new macbook and it the video did really really well it seems like you guys really like the video so here is a part two so if you've watched part one already and you've already figured out all the basics you've had your macbook for a little a little while now or if you just want a little bit more tips and tricks then this is the video for you i've had this bad boy for six months we've been together all quarantine and i've learned a couple more tips and tricks along the way so this is the video where i share those with you all right so the first tip is how to paste and match style so here I'm typing an email and I want to copy and paste this article from Wikipedia about Zanzibar into it. So I can do command C to copy and command V to paste. But when I paste it that way, it has all the blue hyperlinks and it has all the, the text is a different font. So I can remove that. And if I go up to edit, and scroll down to paste and match style, what you'll see is when the text is pasted in, everything is all nice and uniformed and clean and that's just a much better look for, for an email than having everything in all different fonts. So the next thing that I want to show you is how to do force touch to activate your dictionary. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but with your MacBook, you can access your dictionary from about any application that has words in it. And what you typically do is right click. And when you right click on a word like here, impenetrable, what would happen is you can you have the option to look up impenetrable and it will give you the dictionary now with force touch let's just freeze for a second so i can explain what force touch is so force touch is essentially your trackpad has like two different levels of pressure so the first level that's that's just a click and if you press down a little bit more there's a secondary click under the first click if that makes sense so if i use that force touch to click impenetrable then the dictionary definition comes up and I don't need to right click on it. I can also use force touch to change the names of folders. So typically what you do with a folder is you'd right click on the folder and then scroll down to rename and then you're able to type in the name. Another way you can do that is just go over to the folder, force touch, and you've got the blue highlights coming up so you can type in whatever you want. Another cool feature is the hide feature. So you can press Command H to hide any document that you're working on. So let's say, for example, I have my journal open here and someone was to come into the room and I didn't want them to see all my private thoughts. I could essentially command H and that would hide my journal. And now it's just on my dock if I want to pull it back up and it's just my calendar on my screen. Um, it's important to note that if you're gonna, if you're watching a video and you hide the video, the sound doesn't turn off. So that might not work too well if you were at work watching videos when you're supposed to be working, unless you had headphones in, of course. Okay, next feature is sort by. So on my MacBook, I have this mismatch of certificates that I got and I need to organize them all. So what I can do is I can highlight them all and put them in this folder that I created for them. But as you can see, when I pasted them in the folder, they kind of just pasted in this haphazard way and there's no real order to it. So what I can do is I can right click in this folder, anywhere in this folder, and I can scroll down to clean up. 
and that will kind of organize them but it's still not making very good use of the space in the folder so what i can do is i can right click again and i can scroll down to clean up by and then just click clean up by name and now everything's perfectly organized by name and everything's just not a mismatch in the folder okay since we're on file organization the next thing that i want to share with you is how to use the space bar to preview files so keeping with these same certificates let's say i was looking for a specific one in all of these i would ha i don't want to double click on each folder to open each one up what i can do is just hit the space bar and when i hit the space bar i can use my arrow keys to scan through them and find the one that I want. Now it's important to note that the arrow key will only take you to the first row but if you highlight all the all the items in that folder then you can continually press the arrow key all the way through the left right arrow keys all the way through until you get to the end and find the one that you're looking for or you can use the up down arrow keys completely up to you. All right, so number six is switching between multiple screens. Let's say I have a lot of things open because I'm multitasking and I want to quickly switch between screens. Instead of going over to my dock, what I can do is I can click command and click tab and that will move me between the different screens that I have open. So, and I command tab, I can open my calendar or my iMovies or my safari i can also use that to close some of these applications that i don't want open so i can command tab and then quit and then tap tab over to something else and then close that so raquel from the future is editing this video and realized that that probably didn't make much sense so command tab allows you to move between so if i keep hitting tab i can move between these tabs and if i hit Q, I can quit that tab. So I just keep keeping my finger on command. I can tab between and Q allows me to quit. So I can quit all the tabs that way. Okay, so while Apple's great, I find that I much prefer Microsoft Word to Pages but I don't use, I have a work computer separate, so I don't really have to worry about that. But if you are using pages and you want to convert something to a PDF, this is how you do it. So say, for example, I have this letter here, just something I, I copied off the internet. I can either do file print or command P to open up the printing preview. And then I want to go down to the PDF drop down menu and click save as PDF and select where I want to save this PDF document and what I want to name it. And now it's saved as a PDF on my desktop. So this next one in keeping with the PDF theme, have you ever had to sign a PDF document before? Now we all know you can use your trackpad and I'll show you how to do that. It's a little bit annoying, but you can actually take a piece of paper and you can use that piece of paper, hold it up to your camera. And essentially what it will do is it will scan your signature so that you can put it in the document. It's really cool and I'll show you how to do it. So. What do you do? Open up the same PDF that we had here, we just created. You can go over to your markup toolbar and over to signature. Now, this is essentially the trackpad that you can use to draw your signature out on the trackpad, but that just kind of feels ridiculous and looks silly. So what you can do is you can go over to camera and essentially what I'm doing here is I'm holding up my written signature on a piece of paper to the camera and it takes a little bit of fiddling around here but when I get it right essentially what happens is the camera picks up my signature and extracts it from the blank piece of paper and then I can use that to sign documents I just choose done 
and then I can use that signature to sign anything that I want. Okay guys, the next one is a game changer and this is picture in picture. I did not know this existed. In the last video, I showed you how to use split screen to watch a YouTube video on one half of your screen and work on the other half of your screen. Little did I know there was something called picture in picture. So essentially what this is within Safari, you can select a mini player and you just go down to the mini player, select that, and then you can go up to the tab and enter picture in picture by right clicking on the tab now you have picture in picture on your screen and i can browse through the nike store while watching youtube i can also move it around and have it anywhere on my screen that i want this is a game changer guys forget using split screen you can just have picture in picture Keeping with YouTube, I don't know how many of you have tried to, I don't know how many of you are watching this on your laptop and how many of you are watching this on your phone, but I find that when I'm on my laptop, I never know where the emojis are and when I'm commenting on YouTube videos, I tend to like to use emojis, so it's really useful for me. So essentially what you do is you hit command, control, and the space bar and you're able to access emojis. So here I am watching one of my favorite YouTubers, Evelyn from the internet, bringing life to us and I'm leaving her a comment. And what I want to do is I want to add an emoji. So I hit command control, command control in the space bar and I can choose my emoji. Once you select your emoji and the tool disappears, so you have to keep hitting command control and the space bar to select the amount of emojis that you want. And that's it. You're welcome. And that's how you add emojis. If you found that useful and you now know how to add emojis, then comment with the heart eyes emojis down below so that I know that you watched the video to this point and you saw that tip. Okay, for the next tip, this is for all my creatives out there. So I don't have a Photoshop on this computer and I don't, I don't pay for any premium memberships to Canva or any of those services, but I do like to create a transparent picture. And what a transparent picture is essentially is it's a picture that exists with a background but it doesn't have a background so you can make the background whatever you want it to be. So for example, I use this to, to create all my thumbnails. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just take the picture from Google or wherever it is, usually something that already has a plain background, just not necessarily color that I want. And I will go to the markup toolbar, go over to the magic wand. I'm going to click and drag my cursor over the image on the background and it will highlight it red. When it highlights red, I can let go and it's going to have these dotted lines around it. Click delete and it's going to ask me to convert the image. I can convert it and then I can just delete all of that background. Now what happens is when I want to use this background in something like Canva, I can drag it over and I can pop it in Canva and I can choose a different color background. That's how I created this thumbnail and this thumbnail and most of the thumbnails that you see on my YouTube videos. Okay, so this next tip is because somebody asked me about it a while ago in one of my previous videos and I figured I'd just throw it in at the end of this video. So, so what you want to do is open up your photos application and on the left side you'll see the devices and you'll see your memory card listed there. Because my memory card is a uh, from my cell phone, it's going to say no photos available because there are too many different folders on it. But if you're using a memory card from your camera, at this point it should work seamlessly and you should be able to import photos there. What I'm going to have to do is open up my memory card on my desktop and then I'm going to drag my photos from my memory card onto from my memory card into the photos app 
If I wanted to speed this up, I could highlight a whole bunch of photos and I could just copy and paste them in and I would have all the photos that I needed straight into the Photos app without putting them on my desktop first and then moving them over to the Photos app. And for the final tip, for you people that have iPhones, I don't actually have an iPhone as my primary device, but the device that I use for work is an iPhone. So I'm just going to show you how to do this because I thought it was pretty cool and I saw somebody else do this the other day and it's pretty useful for those of you who have iPhones. So say for example, you have, oh, let me get it. Say for example, you have a picture or a video that you took on your iPhone and you wanted to send that to your computer. Essentially, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that AirDrop is turned on on your MacBook. And you do that by opening up your Finder, going over to AirDrop, and then allow me to be discovered by... You want to select everyone or contacts only if your MacBook and your phone are connected. So I'm going to select everyone because my work phone is not connected to my personal computer. So I want to send this picture to my MacBook. So I select share and then I select the airdrop button and then I look for my computer, Raquel's MacBook Air. And I send it to myself and my computer will send me a notification asking me if I want to accept and where I want to save it to. Once I save it, it will download and once it downloads, I can open it up on my MacBook. When I open it up, it will automatically appear and I, I just sent myself an image wirelessly. I think this is fantastic and if you record on your phone, if you make videos and use your phone as your video recorder, then you can just wirelessly dump all the images onto your MacBook for editing. That's a game changer. I think I'd want to get an iPhone specifically for this feature. Okay guys, that's it. That's the last tip I have for you. This is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite tip. Like this video if you like this video and you found it useful. Share it with a friend and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. I can't promise they'll all be tech videos, but I'm really going to make an effort to try and be more consistent with this YouTube channel. Anyway, have a good one. Bye.